working to save the waning coral reef population. That's right now in motion. Most of us know the importance that trees have on our ecosystem. They add depth to our landscapes, provide shelter to wild animals, but most of all, they work to scrub the atmosphere of contaminants that humans make, a marriage made in heaven. Beneath the ocean lies another world within that same ecosystem. And in this world, it relies on a living organism to do much of the work down there as trees do up here. Coral reefs grow in shallow waters near the coast. They're really diverse. They support um, many species we eat, fishes, for example, um, you know, octopus, uh, uh, mussels. And they also build um, protection for the coast. So they build three-dimensional structures. They calcify, the corals themselves calcify, and they build three-dimensional st structures. And that uh, allows the fish to live there. And it also protects the shore from wave impacts, for example, storms. And so it um, provides important services to the people living on the coast. Ileana Baums, an assistant professor of biology at Penn State, is collaborating with other researchers to aid in the restoration of coral reef systems around the world. Coral reefs worldwide are suffering from hurricanes, increased boat traffic, pollution, and global warming. Corals are actually, I mean, they're amazingly resilient. That means they're, they have an amazing ability to recover from storms, for example. But on the other hand, they're also really sensitive animals. The corals live very near to their upper limit in terms of water temperatures. So uh, heating of the water by just a couple of degrees Celsius um, brings them within, their, within the maximum amount they can take. You know, if the water gets too warm, the algae that live within the cells of the corals leave. This mass exodus of algae from within the coral can lead to a loss of color in the animals called coral bleaching, a telltale sign of water temperatures that exceed maximum level to support coral life. If this bleaching episode only lasts a few days or a week or so, uh, then, and then the algae come back, the coral can recover. However, if this bleaching episode lasts too long, the corals will die. And um, that is our major concern. Dr. Baums and her colleagues wait patiently until the corals spawn. Then they collect the juvenile corals and rear them in saltwater tanks on land. We'll you know, put on scuba gear, spend five hours, of, five hours a day underwater, uh, observing the animals, sampling, taking measurements, um, and generally understanding what it is that, that we're looking at. We're uh, searching for genes that are markers that might tell us whether there's coral populations predisposed to being able to survive warmer water temperatures. We are in the process of, you know, building an insurance policy. So we want to get some of these corals in captivity so in case that their habitat in the wild deteriorates further, we have a captive population that we can come back to. For In Motion, I'm Kurt Parker.